Hi everybody, here we are, podcast nine, and um, you can see I've had a bit of a change of outfit today, gone for the red look, the red lipstick, the red dress, um, and um, I was just feeling a bit more bright and breezy today. And um, today we've got quite a different sort of session actually. Um, we're going to be talking about media and raising your profile. So if we have a look at TV at, um, at the moment, you'll see that we've got programmes like, we've got um, Dr. Ranjan Chatterjee, GP of the BBC One series, Doctor in the House. Um, we're also able to watch Dr. Ranj Singh, who's the NHS clinician and this morning's resident doctor. And also there's Dr. Asim Malhotra, who's the consultant cardiologist and writer, and he's got a special interest in improving the nation's diet. So, you know, the, they've all developed their media profiles in a very unique way for mainstream TV and media to become interested in them. And either they've been approached by TV um, to present these programs, or they would have pitched their ideas to TV. And what they've been able to do in that process is actually contribute to the lives of millions and millions of people in the process. So that's a pretty exciting thing to be able to do and really fantastic, you know, having that health, wellness, knowledge, wanting to be able to share those messages with a wider audience. But how do you grow your profile to be featured on mainstream telly? So today we're going to be speaking to a very special lady. She is a producer, a director. She works in factual television, making documentaries. She's actually worked in the media for 22 years and television for over 16 years. That's longer than I have actually been running Tridosha. Um, she's made many programs with access to characters telling interesting stories, as well as charities, institutions. Some of the subjects that she's covered are medical documentaries, OCD, domestic violence, homelessness, poverty, disability, that's just naming a few. She'll be able to tell us a lot more about that. And I have known this lady for many, many years. Many, many years, because you're now meeting my younger sister, Anju, Anju Passi. So Anju, please do tell us about how you got into television, because I'm sure all of our viewers um, will be very excited to know how you carve a career in this area. Um, well, when I was in sixth form, I had vague ideas about being a journalist. So when I went to see the careers advisor, um, he sort of recommended I did a degree um, in journalism or media, something like that. So um, that's what I studied for, uh, which led to me um, eventually working in television. Um, I did some jobs in the media around the industry first, working in corporate films, post-production um, for an online music magazine. Um, and now I've been working in sort of factual TV making kind of documentary programs for over 16 years. Okay, so I mentioned some of the programmes in health and wellness on mainstream telly. Now I know there's more. Can you tell us what else is out there? What else are we watching at the moment? Yeah, there's, um, for sort of health and wellness, daytime TV kind of covers a lot. So on this morning, um, you have the resident doctor who's been on for many years and they cover, they campaign quite a lot. They will cover things on, um, you know, cancer, um, things that people should be aware of. Um, so daytime TV is um, really good for sort of covering um, aspects of health uh, the public need to be aware of. If you look at sort of early evening television, so that's kind of six, seven, eight o'clock, there's a lot of sort of lifestyle programs again, um, and you might see programs with um, sort of prominent um, medical experts, people like Michael Mosley. Um, he does a series called Trust Me, I'm a Doctor on BBC. Um, Fiona Phillips, um, you know, obviously from uh, morning television, um, does a series called The Truth About, and that looks at things like meat or fat or stress. Um, and we've got the sort of two twins, Dr. Chris and Dr. Zand, um, who are quite popular on television as well. Um, they've taken part in so many different documentaries um, and uh, looked at many things. Obviously, um, as you know, twins are tested quite a lot um, and studied quite a lot for um, learning um, more about. Um, 
uh, uh, the body and how we react. So um, yeah, there's, there's, there was actually quite a lot in terms of health and wellness that is covered on television. So that's great. So we're getting our messages out. So what are TV producers actually looking for when they sign people up to these sorts of programmes? Um, the thing to remember is that uh, television uh, comes in many different styles and genres. So somebody working in daytime television is looking for something different to somebody working uh, on a documentary. So say, for example, you had um, uh, a you've been campaigning against something and you want that highlight you want the public to um, uh, take part or hear a bit more about it it sort of fits into news um, it fits into sort of local news local events and it also kind of fits into lifestyle programming so if you watch this morning um, or good morning Britain you know they'll get people to they'll get people on um, in good morning Britain they get people on often to do a debate in the morning so one person will be on this side one person will be on that side so it could be that you know you have two people talking about traditional methods of health once somebody else talking about alternative health and they get you on um, as an expert um, and you debate that if you look at something like this morning um, it could be that they're um, it's more lifestyle they're talking about maybe meditation or a new yoga trend um, and they may want to get somebody on to demonstrate um, that um, and again you know you could have an event coming up that could fit into the one show um, in the evening. Um, if it's a documentary or the type of thing that I would work on, we need something a little bigger. Um, we need a presenter uh, to fit a format around, we need to devise something, or we need um, a relevant um, hospital or institution, um, or we need a relevant topic, uh, for example, um, dementia is talks about quite a lot, or Alzheimer's, or um, uh, stress levels. So we may choose to make a full one hour documentary um, on a subject uh, like that, but we're doing something a bit bigger and a bit more intense. Okay. Um, so, so we're different things. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So what are kind of, what are some of the things? So okay, I get that you you work on uh, the big um, TV shows, and then there's different there's different channels, different times of the day where maybe um, some people watching this video where their work would fit or their voice would fit. So what are the tricks of the trade? What do we need to be doing to be on your radar or TV's radar? I should say. So yeah, so the way TV works is. E each uh, type of program um, has a different person working on them. So if you're looking at a daytime lifestyle program um, where, you know, somebody wants you to come on, demonstrate um, a new yoga move, it's a five minute thing um, and they're looking for an expert, perhaps someone that's local, somebody that's a little bit further afield, uh, they would have what's called a forward planning producer. So the forward planning is the forward plans, the upcoming shows. So they would know a few weeks in advance that on this particular Friday, they want to feature item or that item um, and for certain things. So that's the person you're looking for. And you can find their name as the credits roll. Um, you can find them on LinkedIn. Um, you can find them on, uh, they'll have a Twitter page. Um, as they're looking for things, they may put a casting call out. So you need to be linked to them. They may say, I am looking for, um, you know, um, a massage uh, therapist uh, for a specific event in three weeks time. But unless you're connected to that person looking, you won't know about that opportunity. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it's that um, other types of producers are casting producers. So casting producers will cast um, for a whole program. It could be anything from a quiz, um, to um, a health program uh, to a dating program to anything um, they move around from job to job um, and they um, are always looking for people so they'll have their own website page Twitter page LinkedIn page every time they want a new a new program they'll put out a message and you'll be able to see um, who and what they're looking for um, again the sort of thing I do I you know I've worked on something about OCD so then I might be looking for the best unit in the country or the best OCD expert and I can probably find them online um, so it's a question of um, you know doing a bit of research figuring out how these people are if you're looking at editorial 
story or say for a magazine, a journalists are always looking for stories. Um, they are always on deadline. It's always very quick. So they want to find people quickly. But again, they will have, once you know their name, you need to be looking for the health editor, the beauty editor. Um, don't just look for the editor, look for a, a specific person that's covering, targeting that area. Again, they, they're probably on Twitter. They're saying, you know, I need somebody to comment on this. I need them tomorrow. Uh, and then you can put yourself forward. Um, and that's a way of kind of um, finding out what opportunities are out there um, and um, responding to them sort of, okay, you know, so um, as quite, quick as possible. Quite organized, have a good database, keep it up to date. Um, what if you're looking to really go out yeah. and build um, a strong media profile? So in the way that maybe some of the people that you actually work with on your TV programs, what are some of the key strategies that you think um, a person needs to do there? If that was their focus, yeah. if that was their dream. Yeah, so it, yeah, so it, the question of work on, we would probably be looking for um, a presenter. They would probably not be new. They will have been tried out somewhere um, because um, they will have to have a certain level of profile or have been popular or have been proven elsewhere that they are able to present or they're going to be good on screen so um so the types of places you, you can get tried out are the easier places so um you do respond to um online magazines first so that's the first port of call so starting yourself in some articles making some comment and some articles uh, once you've done that start looking to social media lots of there's a lot of online films now so they make do profiles of people there could be um a um online uh, magazine that is making um, films about local events um, and profiling different people in the area so maybe you can you can be profiled there. You end up with a bit of video that you could put on your website or blog so you haven't had to pay for it, but then you've got a little video and you can see how you come across and they can see how you, uh, they come across. Um, it may be that you're working specifically in an area, you've written a book, um, this has been published, you know, that would get you noticed. So the more profile you've got, uh, the more popular you are online or have been featured in you know, 10 articles, then you're gonna come to the attention of um, a television producer. If you're easy to find online, you will come to the attention of a television producer. If you can't be found, you're not out there, there's no profile, there's no LinkedIn, there's no Twitter, um, there isn't anything, then how can we find you, if you know what I mean, unless you respond to something or out. So it's, it's in your interest to you know, keep all your stuff up to date, good pictures, a little bit of video if you can, um, but don't make it hard for yourself, um, make it easy. Like I say, you don't have to go and pay somebody to do video for you. You can film something on your phone, um, you know, or, or let somebody else, but you need to be in touch with the right um, magazines, the local radio, the local news, you need to know the right person. There's no point, you know, getting in touch with a sports producer. They're not looking for you. There's no point getting in touch with um, a drama producer. They're not looking for you. So, you know, make sure that you've done your, the correct research okay. um, and just try and stay on the radar and just try and stay on, um, you know, knowing what opportunities are coming up. There's also, in terms of journalism, there are a couple of websites uh, where journalists put out there casting calls or their call outs um, and these are called things like um, response resource um, press quest and Gorkana. Um, I think they might be subscription based um, so it may be that you know you're better off just finding out the name of the uh, beauty editor or health editor contacting them directly you don't necessarily need to spend money but if you wanted to get an idea of um, what journalists are asking for in terms of health and well-being then they could be a good place to start uh, just to have a look Brilliant. Wow. Loads of information there. So for those of you that want to grow your media profile, for those of you that may be interested in giving TV a crack, then, um, you know, follow those strategies. There's lots of information there. And um, I just want to say thank you, Andrew. Thank you for your time. And um, very much appreciated. And anything else you want to say before we um, call it a day? No, no problem. No okay. problem, big sister. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you, younger sister. Bye. <laughs>